One of the largest figures in all of entertainment history is now one of my favorite minifigures in all of LEGO history. Lights, camera, action, this set's got it all, minus the lights and the action. On tonight's program, we're talking about the all-new Walt Disney Tribute Camera Set. This one was released in September 2023, happy birthday to me. It contains 811 pieces and costs $100 here in the US. The set features the vintage camera on top of a cool-looking tripod with some celluloid film coming out of it with some classic Disney characters. We've got a little clapperboard minifigure display piece with some great-looking minifigures and new mini figure mini creature animal dudes and my favorite part the multiplane camera which we will talk about in a few minutes let's talk about this camera right after we talk about these incredible minifigures. We get Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Dumbo, and Bambi, two brand new molded animals. But if you have mother issues or fond memories of your mother, or you just have a mother, or your mother was killed by hunters or shackled by circus workers, well, you may not have happy memories of these movies, but nevertheless, I think the figures themselves look very nice. It's a bird, it's a butterfly, no, it's a Bambi, a new molded animal from Lego. The new molding looks nice, the new printing looks nice, it looks a little more like a figure out of the Friends line than anything else, but I like its inclusion here. Bam! B. Sorry, trigger warning for those who have just watched Bambi, pun intended. It's a deer, not a doe, not a female deer. I believe Bambi is a boy, he's referred to as a little prince, and he uses some of that royal ignorance to misname a fellow forest creature. He calls a skunk Flower, that's not their name. Take back your power. There is power in a name. In this case, Flower Power. Also included here is a new Dumbo figure. If you drop this Dumbo during a surgery, that would be Operation Dumbo Disaster because this little guy has no place in an operating room. Dumbo was also my nickname in high school, though to be fair, I was an unintelligent boyfriend at the time. This little dude is double molded, though he is sporting his circus garb, not to give any credit to his oppressors. I think his trunk looks a little weird from certain angles, though you can fit a feather into it, though it may look a little weird and oversized. Speaking of weird and oversized, Dumbo does have have his ears included here. I, I'm saying he's cute. He's actually, he's pretty cute. Of course, we have the mouse, the myth, the legend, the one and only Mickey Mouse. Understated, stunning, elegant, iconic. These are all adjectives, though not necessarily ones I would use to describe this figure. He is very similar to the Mickeys that we've gotten in the past, but he's fitting for the look of the Mickey at the time that this camera is framing for us. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine, and that's all you are. I would describe him as just fine, but that's fine for what he is. Do we need more black and white Mickeys? No, but that's not stopping Lego from giving us at least another one in an upcoming Steamboat Willie gift with purchase. Speaking of this version compared to the Steamboat Willie version, they're exactly the same, except he has less shiny pants and lacks a hat. Compared to the Simpsons Willy, he's a lot less colorful of a character, literally and figuratively. Minnie Mouse is, how can I put it, also included. Again, simple but fitting for the set. This is a good time to note that all of the minifigures here are animated characters, and so they wouldn't have actually been filmed on the camera that is the main subject of this set. This mini is again very similar to all of the other minis like the Steamboat Willie's mini, except they have a different eyelash design to fit the times. Everyone knows only girls have eyelashes. Her mini skirt is a different sheen, and again, she lacks a hat and is missing a musical instrument. And honestly, the main reason that I bought this set, we get a Walt Disney minifigure for the first time ever. The man behind the mouse, the myth, the legend, the incomparable Walt Disney. He is like a well, incomparable. The figure is simple. He is okay for what he is, and it's more significant that he's included for who he is and that he's included in the first place for the first time, but the face print does come across a little weird to me with the mustache being close to the mouth. It looks a little funny at first. Though I will always appreciate Walt for showing the world how cool a widow's peak can look, and the hairpiece included is, I don't know, it does the job well enough here. But if you're like me and you're not crazy about the head, that's okay. You can always freeze it and bury it under the Pirates of the Caribbean and ride until the technology exists to resurrect it as a more satisfactory piece. Let's talk about this camera. Right after we talk about this awesome minifigure display stand in the form of a clapper board and including a multiplane camera, very nice. Right now, Disney is messing with the multiverse in this Mick universe, but in this alternate universe before the multiverse, there was the multiplane camera. This was a revolutionary animation innovation, which would give the illusion of dimensionality and perspective using multiple panes of painted glass positioned at multiple planes. 
No idea why they called it a multi-plane camera, though. You can still see a real multi-plane camera on display at the Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco, California. Unfortunately, the last time I was in San Fran, I wasn't able to visit because I had to be a good friend and attend a beautiful wedding, which could be referred to as picturesque, and that would still be doing a disservice to the true beauty of that occasion. Times were good in the 1940s, rampant misogyny aside, but Walt Disney never had to ask you to like and subscribe to his videos. But I do, so please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Now back to the program. Okay, let's talk about this camera, right? Why are you rolling the credits? We're not done yet here. Okay, let's talk about this camera right after we talk about this weird new film strip piece that's included here. This piece looks very cool. It's supposed to represent, I don't know, 35 millimeter celluloid film, which would have been fitting into this camera here. It's got all kinds of depictions of all kinds of cool minifigures and stuff. We'll look at those in a second, but I don't love this piece. Obviously, when LEGO puts a lot of their promotional material on their website, it's art, it's renders, right? It's, it's CG, it's not real LEGO sets. If it were real LEGO sets, this piece wouldn't sit so nicely like that. It would be sagging. I think gravity is the true villain of this feature. And as far as Disney villains go, that's not nearly as impressive as, say, Chernabog from Fantasia or Family Tension in Encanto. Nothing is scarier than a disappointed abuela. Speaking of Encanto and everyone's abuela, we get Mirabelle and a little Encanto slide on that film strip. But if we go all the way to the bottom of that strip, this basically goes in chronological order with some of the oldest Disney stuff at the bottom, moving all the way up to, I guess Encanto is the, the latest here. But if we start at the bottom there, we get Steamboat Willie, who we got in a set and are getting in another set. Then we get Snow White, who we just got in the Disney Castle set, the second Disney Castle, not the first Disney Castle. We got Pinocchio, who we just got, we just got in the new Disney minifigure series. We get Sorcerer Mickey, we also just got him in the minifigure series. And and then, look who's next. It's Dumbo followed by Bambi. That kind of, I guess, lends some insight into why those might have been the figures included here because I think LEGO is working their way up this film strip and giving us some hints at who may be coming soon. And giving us some hints at some coming attractions. That's better. What's that, Maleficent as the, as the dragon? Well, I think we just got a leak of a future Maleficent set, at least in that survey, so we'll see if we actually get that coming. And then some other stuff, like maybe we'll get a minifigure beast. That could be something, and Lego teased the Simba-built figure. Maybe that's Lion King, and maybe they'll actually give us a Mushu to go along with Mulan. I don't know. It's just cool to see a lot of these characters in minifigure form. It's cool to see them on a faux celluloid plastic piece. It's just not cool to see them, I don't know, falling apart here. I'm probably gonna take that part off if I actually display this set. Okay, let's talk about this camera. Finally. If you're wondering, I don't know, what kind of camera might that be? It's hard to say. Is it a Bell and Howell model 2709 35mm camera with a Mitchell matte box and viewfinder? Maybe. Maybe not everyone would have done so much research, but that's the camera that this looks most similar to. We know that Walt used Bell and Howell cameras. We know that he owns some Birkin James Universal cameras, ironically named. That kind of looks like the body of this set. I think this is most likely based on the Bell and Howell camera, and if you want to see one of those in real life, you can see one at the Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco, California. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it out there last time I was in San Fran. I had to be a good friend and attend a wedding, which could be referred to as picturesque, and that would still be doing a disservice to the true beauty of that occasion. As for aesthetics, I think this camera looks really nice if you intend to display it somewhere as a tribute to Walt Disney, which is what I think LEGO intends for us to do with this set. I'm not crazy about the 100 up top, but it's easily enough removable uh, if you just want this to look like a normal film camera. Personally, if you ask me, I think Disney is a bigger fan of the Disney 100th anniversary than fans of Disney are of the anniversary. You can't give us a different anniversary for a different thing every two years, Disney. It loses all meaning. Compared to the camera, I would say the tripod plays a supporting role in this set, literally. Though it does look really nice, I like the little wood details, the little metal details, the supports. It looks complicated in this middle bit, right? And that's the true to the form. If you look at real cameras from that era, like the one on display at the Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco, California, I'm not gonna do it again. Call it a play feature if you want, though this is an 18 plus set and we don't play with our Lego, we display them elegantly, tiny forest creatures and all. But you can turn a little cranky on the side of this camera and you got a little sound, can you hear it? It makes a very subtle little clicking sound, which is what the real camera of this era would sound like, probably. I don't know, I'm not that old. Call it a play feature if you want, but the matte box in this camera slides forward and backwards just like it does in the real thing, though I would sooner call that a semi-gloss box than a matte box, but we'll let that one slide, though I am looking forward to the addition of the matte box Ghost of the Haunted Mansion later this year. A lot happened just now, even for me. Also, with that matte box slid forward, you can rotate the different lenses on this camera, just like on a real camera. 
Pun intended, I guess, again, I'm honestly not planning all of these. A downside to this set, the internals of this camera don't actually contain the mechanics necessary to film an actual Lego movie. Instead, if you open it up, you get a replica of Walt Disney's desk. Though, that desk would be a lot more impressive if Lego hadn't literally just made that in a gift of purchase, like a month before this set, and it's larger and slightly more detailed and better, I think. Though I do appreciate that set because it contains a little projector, and I also have a little projector. I guess I also have a little camera because we're making a video, but uh, they're both cool. Okay, let's talk about this camera. As soon as we end this video, when you wish upon a star makes no difference who you are, anything your heart desires will come to you if you happen to desire an old vintage camera to signify Walt's legacy. For the rest of us, at least we got a Walt Disney minifigure. I'll see you next time.